I'm a professional Photoshop artist and I ask you to send me your thumbnails on my Discord server. But first, let's turn on some music. Welcome ladies and gentlemen into the Photoshop and let's get straight into it reviewing your thumbnails and potentially fixing them. I'm gonna call the thumbnails by their titles. So the first thumbnail is I tried famous food from cartoon. First of all, this is a great thumbnail. I really like the colors. The overall aesthetic is very pleasing to the eye, but I think there are a few things we could improve. So right off the bat, we have a lot of empty space, which we don't really want in the thumbnail. So this part of the background and this part of the background is very empty. Even though we have a lot of details in the background, uh, it still feels a little empty because it's the background and we don't really pay attention to the background. That brings me to another point. Backgrounds shouldn't be that detailed. Of course, it depends on the thumbnail itself, but usually we want the main focus to be on the either character or object, whatever, whatever that may be. And also I noticed you went with a very, very unique perspective. And I personally never done anything like that. I lean towards realistic thumbnails, if you can call this realistic. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. But this is pretty cool, unique. But we have the same issue with the table uh, as with the background. There's a lot of empty space. So right here on the left and on the right, there's just a lot of space that's just empty and doesn't serve any purpose at all. So instead, this is what I would have done. I'm just roughly applying what I just said. As we can see, I made the background a little lighter so it doesn't pull too much attention to itself. Uh, I also made the t-shirt black for some reason. I don't know, just felt like it. And the main thing, the foreground, as you can see, I made the burger a lot bigger and I tried filling uh, this space right here with a little tag. Since the video is about trying food from cartoons, uh, I figured that might be a Krabby Patty from Spongebob, so I put a Spongebob logo in there as a tag. This is pretty much it for the first thumbnail. Let's see before and after. Moving on, the next thumbnail is Safe Cash and Keep It. I assume this is some kind of Mr. Beast type of thumbnail with Ronaldo huh? for some reason. Very cool thumbnail. I really like the execution, especially the muzzle flash from the tank looks very nice. Nonetheless, there are a lot of things I think just look a bit weird. So let's take a look. First things first, the timer on the top. I know guys, it's very hard to make red color glow. For that, I would recommend watching Benny's production video about lighting. He explains it very well. So yeah, because you added a little glow around the numbers, now the numbers don't really stand out. Another big thing, if we have a ground here, then we should be able to see his whole body. And speaking of Ronaldo, he does need a little work. I mean, I get it. You try to stitch two pictures together. It can work. Just need a little more fine tuning. And last but not least, the tanks. I just think they're a little too bright. So keeping all that in mind, here is my version of this thumbnail. So first things first, as we can see, I changed the timer at the top with less glow numbers stand out pretty nicely. I also extended the box down so it doesn't look that weird and also added a shit ton of glow for the muzzle flash on the left. I just felt like it could use a little more oomph. I also removed the tears and wears on the t-shirt because I just think it looks very amateur. Everyone nowadays put some wears and tears on the shirts in the thumbnails and that's kind of, that's like a outdated trend i feel like uh, i also improved the shadows casted by the sun around on the money and that pretty much covers it before and after next thumbnail is called rtx 5090 revision i think you meant review I can't speak for you, but what I can do for you is try to improve this thumbnail. <laughs> the main thing I noticed in this thumbnail is we don't need to say RTX 5090 twice. It just doesn't make sense. If you look closely at the magic around GPU, 
it's very vibrant, very green, but the highlights on our character is close to teal, and that kind of gives that weird separation. You either want to light the character with the same color or the opposite color on the spectrum wheel. I'm not gonna dive into color theory in this video. If you want me to break it down in the next video, just leave it in the comments below. So applying all these changes, here's what I came up with. So I completely removed the text and made the text on the GPU white so it stands out a lot better. And I matched the color of the highlights to the color of the magic. And that really helped us bring everything together and well, I'm trying to come up with a word. You get what I mean. And the next thumbnail is actually untitled. I just noticed I drink green monster on a green background. Wow. Oh, brother. So one main thing I can tell you about this thumbnail is if your thumbnail is mainly gonna be drawings, just stick to drawings. What I mean by that, we again repeat the same thing twice as we can see it's some kind of a trolley problem where you either pull the lever or don't we show it twice in the thumbnail we have a realistic photo of a guy with a lever and we have a drawing of a guy with a lever we don't need to show that twice so so you either stick with drawings or make a whole photo manipulation but make it realistic in this case what I would have done is just remove the guy. We don't need him in this thumbnail. So here's what I came up with. As we can see, this looks much cleaner. Because the trolley problem is such a big thing, just a picture is really enough for the viewer to understand what the video is about. So once again, here is before and after. Moving on, I think this has to be my favorite thumbnail of today. And the title is 24 hours with a boxer. The thumbnail pretty much covers it. It's very nice and bright. The overall composition is on point and the motion blur is done very nicely. Although there are a few things I would have done. So first I would clean the text on the shirt. And one more thing, we don't want our head to be cut off. So here's what I would have done. So as you can see, I lowered the whole thing down because I didn't want the head to be cut off. I cleaned the shirt and added 24 hours text and a little arrow. You don't need to add a text. I'm usually against text on the thumbnails, but if you do have an empty space like that, maybe try and put something in there like a text or an arrow. So yeah, this is very simple fix. Here's before and after. If you're enjoying this video, consider liking and subscribing because that helps me a ton. Also guys, I'm open for commissions, so if you'd like to reach out, my email will be in the description down below. And let's continue with the video. Moving forward, we do not stop. The next thumbnail is called How to Control Your Lust. I think we all need an answer to that. I'm kidding. Or am I? Anyways, at the first glance, this is a very nice thumbnail. I really like the coloring, the lighting is very, very nice. Few little things I noticed. And the first one is hair. You probably just clicked object selection and didn't do any further work. Guys, hair can be messy, so take your time with refining hair. And another point with thumbnails like this with the text in the white box and this is a good example of a thumbnail that needs text and this is a great way to do it and this is a great way to do it if you want text just add a nice little box kind of like a message or a twitter post whatever that may be it always looks very nice i personally love those thumbnails but again if you do want to put text try not to overdo it because right here we have too much going on in here and that also falls into the same category of repeating the same thing twice we have a name here and we have the same name here we don't need that so either don't put a name at all or put just one and speaking of which these logos on the corners same thing you either put them in the thumbnail so you see them or don't put them 
at all. In my opinion, they're not necessary and they don't make much sense in the corners because they're not very visible. So here's what I would have done. As we can see, first things first, I used AI upscaling tool to refine the hair a bit more on the edges. And I also redid the box and put only one name in it. And I also brighten up the eyes. The eyes are very important in your thumbnail. If the eyes look weird, they can ruin the thumbnail. So watch out for that. So here's our before and after. Moving on, we have a thumbnail from my friend Alex. And this is a very nice thumbnail. And the execution is almost perfect. I mean, obviously, I taught the guy Photoshop. And as all students do, they make mistakes. And this thumbnail is not an exception. So the biggest issue I see with this thumbnail is it's very dense. The textures are so high that we get this weird pixelization. I mean, sure, it does add some grunge to the thumbnail. But if pushed too hard, it's gonna, at some point, it's gonna start looking like this. And the other thing is background. We only have one light source, which is uh, this lamp right here. I mean, unless there's a projector that's pointed directly at them, which I doubt, it shouldn't be that bright. And last but not least, the softening on the edges. I like using blur around the edges because it really helps tie everything together. If we zoom in right here, as we can see, the blur is so intense that we lose that quality and details. We don't really want that. We want everything crisp and the blur should be very subtle, very subtle. You should barely notice it. So keeping that in mind, here's what I would have done. As we can see, the change is so dramatic, but let me explain. I darkened the whole background, leaving only this lamp right here, which I made glow a nice orange light. What I also did is darken our guy in the back a lot, because I assume this is a horror game and this is the killer. And usually in horror, we don't want to show the danger in its full glory. We just want some hints of danger. If I was making this thumbnail, I would completely change the background. I would probably put like a hallway with the silhouette of this guy. I think that would be a lot more powerful. Using the glow from the lamp, I drew a nice rim light on his side, making his silhouette stand out a little more. What I also did is soften the skin. As we can see now, it's less pixelated from what we had originally and i also drew some shadows on this side of his face because i wanted to add some dimension to the thumbnail and in my opinion faces looked a little too flat and i did the same rim light on the side and with that said here's before and after moving on we're almost approached the end here we have i beat my enemy in clash royale thumbnail and a few things that I like about this thumbnail is colors. They're very bright. I really like the combination of yellow and blue all around the thumbnail. It's very nice and cohesive. But I do want you guys to pay attention to the shadows because they are very, very dark. Almost, if we sample this color, it is almost pure black, which you don't want at all, ever. And also the composition kind of looked off. Since this is a video about Clash Royale, this is the first thing I want to show in the thumbnail. So here's my version of this thumbnail. So what I basically did is first I used AI to recover those very dark spots and now we at least see the headphones. Then what I did is I took the guy from the center and put it on the left. I assume this is our main character and on the right side is our quote unquote enemy. And I changed his shirt to red, assuming he is the enemy. I actually really like using red and blue in the thumbnails because those two colors really say rival in my opinion. Blue versus red. It's always been it's always been blue versus red. It's it's never blue versus green or whatever. It's always blue versus red. And I also put some random screenshots from the game in the center because the video is about Clash Royale. This is what we want to see. So once again, here is before and after. Moving on to our last but not least thumbnail, how to make dynamic poses. I assume since I made those two videos about animations, now some animators watch me. So hello guys. I honestly didn't expect animators to stick around on a Photoshop channel. 
So I really appreciate it. So what do we have in this thumbnail? F first thing I noticed is colors. Let me quickly explain what I mean. If we sample the color of this blue guy and draw it right here, then we take a color of our background and we draw it right here. Then if we put saturation all the way down, as we can see, the contrast is so little, it's barely noticeable. And why that matters is because we do want our subject to stand out. And if the contrast is low, then it doesn't really stand out, right? I encourage you guys to watch this video about colors. It blew my mind the first time I watched it. And I think that can be a great thing to learn about for all of you guys. This kind of blew my mind when I first learned about it. So back to the thumbnail, we once again have text. If you have to put text in your thumbnail, sure, do it. But be very, very careful. In this example, how to make, you can barely see it. If we zoom out, you can barely see it. So you either put it there or don't. And one more thing, the space between the word dynamic and poses is much greater than between how to make and dynamic. And what that does is just ruining the balance of the whole thumbnail. And two more things, the color of the hair is the exact same color of the background, which again, doesn't really stand out. I also noticed that you put a line right here, separating the side with the text and the side with the character, which is very nice. I use that technique all the time, but again, it's not contrasty at all. If we decrease saturation, in some cases, you don't even see the line. So the contrast should be a lot greater. Keeping all that in mind, here's how I would have approached this thumbnail. And as you can see, I made the thumbnail itself look dynamic. And this really helps with positioning everything and having that cohesiveness in the whole thumbnail. So I basically did everything I just mentioned. I made the character a darker, more saturated green color and that really helped making him stand out from the white background. And I also did the same separation but the side with the text I made a lot darker so we have that very nice contrast in between. And I also put those dark lines which kind of look like a movie trailer which really helps emphasize the work dynamic in the thumbnail and the video itself. It was a very simple thumbnail but here is before and after. Ugh, thumbnails, thumbnails, thumbnails. They can be a pain in the ass, especially if you're a beginner. I get that. I've been doing thumbnails for over eight years now. But if for some reason you don't agree with my changes, let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate any feedback you guys could give me. And if you did enjoy my versions, then consider subscribing and liking the video because that really helps me a ton. I also have another video in the process, so that's gonna come out very soon. Damn, I'm on my YouTube grind. We the best. <laughs> Oh my god, what am I doing? And this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the very next one.